Welcome to an introductory video presented by the Pastiche Distance Learning Program. Hello, my name is Florence, Education Director of the Pastiche Distance Learning Educational Program. I'm best known for my teaching method of skin analysis called the Pastiche Method. But today I'm going to talk to you about another love of mine, Cosmetic Chemistry. Today we are discussing sun protection ingredients, and asking the question, is a sun protection product enough to prevent cellular damage? A great deal of information is available about free radicals, and this term is now extensively used to market skin care products to consumers. What is not understood or talked about is the extent of cellular damage that will compound from the oxidative stress that is a result of radical exposure. Compounded oxidative stress ultimately leads to lipid peroxidation and the resulting mitochondria damage will mean that conditions like pigmentation and skin cancer become more common and difficult to treat. The different types of radicals caused by heat, light waves, pain, medications, pollution and air, all have varying effects on skin cells, but a common result of exposure irrespective of the type of radical is the oxidization of vitamin C. As we age our built-in protection systems decline, this along with radical exposure means a reduction in the balance of the vitamin group that protects us. The ACE vitamins, as they are often called have also become the target of skin care companies and many varied formulations will contain at least two of these vitamins. The key is in the synergy and understanding that for the vitamin group to protect skin there must be all three available to skin. Water-soluble vitamin C is the first to oxidize, and needs to be replaced nutritionally and topically on a daily basis. This is because vitamin C is not metabolized by skin. Vitamin C also reactivates the oil-soluble vitamin E, making it a vital link to the synergy of a cell's defense system. Vitamin E is abundant within the keratinocyte cell membrane. It is however a weak antioxidant and can only neutralize one radical at a time, before becoming inactive. Vitamin E is entirely dependent on vitamin C for reactivation, and the cell is dependent on vitamin A for support, as an alternative oil-soluble cellular antioxidant when levels of vitamin E decline. Fortunately large quantities of beta-carotene and other forms of antioxidants of the carotenoid group are found within the spinosome layer of the epidermis. Not all of these can be converted to vitamin A, but they play a role in skin barrier defense. Receptors for retinal palmitate are found within the cell membrane ensuring a steady supply of intracellular retinol and retinoic acid for cellular homeostasis and energy. Another integral part of cellular defense is the 45% phospholipid content of the keratinocyte cell membrane. These lipids can, and will be attacked and oxidized by radicals when the balance of the vitamin group is lost or compromised. Intracellular oxidative stress along with increasing risk of mitochondrial damage will result. Understanding the domino effect of radical exposure, and how quickly the imbalance between the basic vitamin group of ACE can lead to the many skin conditions that result is extremely important to the skin treatment therapist of this millennium. Heat and light that is created by UVR and resulting sunburn accelerates the oxidation of vitamin C, a common leading cause of oxidative stress and lipid peroxidation. Varying wavelengths of light result in varying levels of cell damage to different cells of the epidermis and dermis. The keratinocyte, 
melanocyte and fibroblast are the cells most commonly affected. It is assumed that by using sun protection ingredients that cellular damage will be avoided during sun exposure. Particulate sun protection ingredients like titanium dioxide and zinc oxide work by reflecting the waves of UVR, offering a physical barrier. The term physical sunblock is a result of that action and often leading us to believe that a greater protection is afforded to skin as a result. And it is true that zinc oxide will give protection against all of the wavelengths of UVR, and some reflection of infrared heat. Chemical sun protection ingredients absorb UVR and convert the energy of light to heat. It is theorized that this may not necessarily be a good thing because radicals are increased by heat. What I hope you are beginning to understand is that despite our best efforts the sun protection ingredients be they particulate or chemical they will only prevent tree thema. Sunburn, not the radicals caused by heat, light or air. In fact they may increase radicals by their action. Here are some options and advice for you to pass on to your customers and patients. Reduce exposure to sun during the hours that increase the risk of sunburn. Prevent sunburn by using a physical sun protection product or a blend of physical and chemical that will give you protection from UVB and UVA A1 and 2. Replace vitamin C on a daily basis and always include the ACE vitamin as the most basic antioxidant replacements. Expand your antioxidant usage to cover both intra- and extracellular types. Protect the phospholipid content of the cell membrane by increasing the use of these types of emollients and lipids. Do not become paranoid or buy into the mindset that sun, light and air is bad for you. You will not survive without them. Practice sensible skin barrier defense, and preserve the integrity of the epidermis at all times. I hope you enjoyed this short video and that you will consider visiting my website Pastiche Training, as seen on screen. Here you will find many distance learning programs that will expand your knowledge base. I look forward to seeing you in my virtual classroom very soon. Goodbye for now.